students how are you i hope you have revised the previous chapter we have done now for you i am starting chapter 4 chapter 4 class 11 subject biology and the chapter name is animal kingdom very important chapter here what's important in brief i'll tell you first we'll study about the different category of animal kingdom characteristics are very important few new terms we have here and i'm going to explain certain diagrams as well so we are starting the chapter first tell brief about what we are going to do here the basis of classification on what basis or which characters takes on which uh based upon which we have uh, classified the animal kingdom or the scientists have done it now the classification the particular classification and the characteristics of the particular phylum present here we are starting with general introduction when you look around you will observe different animals with different structure and different forms we all know that all the animals are not similar in their structure and their forms they are different as over a million species of animals have been described till now we are aware this n number of animals present in our universe the need for the classification becomes all the more important reason being if we do not classify them into the specific category to again and again to study from basic from scratch is really tough the for the systematic study we have to have a classification the classification also help in assigning a systematic position to the newly described species so by the classification we are making our work easier with this now we are starting first heading and that is the basis of classification basis matlab what particular things we have taken kaun kaun si cheeze humne select kiye jis par humne jo bhi animals hai unko categorize kiya hai to dekhte hain hum isko yahan pe humne kaun kaun si characteristics yahan dekh li aur kaise unko fir correlate kiya to humne jo liya hai basically that is the common to the various individual and the relation arrangement of cells body symmetry nature of sea loam pattern of digestive circulatory or reproductive system these features are used as a basis of animal classification and some of them will definitely discuss here so if one mark question teacher will ask for what are the basis for the animal classification specifically so you can say the arrangement of cell body symmetry nature of sea loam pattern of digestive circulatory or reproductive system these are the features based the classification based on these features to so first i'll study with the arrangement of cell that is related to the levels of organization okay to so levels of organization you know we have heard few animals we have just jo sirf ek hi cell mein apna pura life cycle complete kar lete hain कुछ कॉलोनीज में रहते हैं एंड उसके बाद बहुत ही मल्टी सेलुलर एनिमल हाईली डेवलप्ड एनिमल भी प्रेजेंट है हमारे पास में तो विल सी हाउ वी हैव कैटेगराइज देम ऑल मेंबर्स ऑफ एनिमेलिया आर मल्टी सेलुलर तो फर्स्ट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स एनिमल्स में जितने भी आपके ऑर्गेनिजम्स प्रेजेंट हैं दे आर मल्टी सेलुलर ऑल ऑफ देम डू नॉट एग्जिबिट सेम पैटर्न of organization of the cell to agar ye study kare hum unhe to unme organization ek jaisa nahi hai cells ka for example sponges they are the simplest uh, organisms the cells are arranged as loose aggregates cells hai iske andar mein to cellular level of organization hai lekin kaise hai jo cells hai wo aapas mein लूजली अरेज है कोई स्पेसिफिक रिलेशन या कोई और कम्युनिकेशन वो कैरी नहीं करते हैं दैट मीन्स आगे बताया भी है दे एग्जिबिट अ सेल्युलर लेवल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन तो इफ समी विल आस्क ऑफ द स्पॉन्जेस तो वॉट काइंड ऑफ सेल्युलर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दे हैव दे हैव सेल्युलर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वॉट काइंड ऑफ लेवल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन तो दे हैव सेल्युलर लेवल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सम डिविजन ऑफ लेवल 
activities occur among the cell fine we'll move with the different different phylums now cylindroids these are a group of animals the arrangement of cell is more complex here the cell performs same function are arranged in our tissues so they are better or developed as compared to sponges because there was cellular level of organization what do we have here we have tissue level of organization similar cell they are combining together to perform a specific function now still the higher level of organization the organ level level is exhibited by members of plate element this again a group of all animals and the higher phyla where the tissue are grouped together to form the organs the cells first level is the cellular level then they are combining together to perform a specific function is the tissue le tissue level and next is the tissues combining together to give us a organ now after that the animals like annelids arthropods and molluscs echinodermids with chordates the organs have associated in the form of the functional system you can say the organs combine together to form a specific organ system so this particular organization is called organ system level of organization for an example if i'll talk about stomach intestine then uh, what else we have buccal cavity they are the different organs but if they combine together so they give us definitely a complete system of digestion to the animals and us as well now we'll move ahead the organ system in the different group of animals exhibit various patterns of complexities obviously for example the digestive system in platyhelminthes platyhelminthes the only single opening to outside the body right single opening to outside the body means the particular organ is responsible for taking something and for the excretion as well that serves as both mouth and anus as they are called incomplete incomplete because they do not have a complete system so what do we understand by the complete system now here i have given here the complete digestive system has two openings as we have mouth and anus the platy helminthes they don't have it they have the one opening only similarly circulatory system may have two types may be open type may be closed type what do we understand by the open type in which blood is pumped out of the heart and cells and tissues are directly bathed that means all the organs present or visceral organs present inside the cavity they are bathed into blood wo usi ke andar blood ke andar wo hote hain like cockroach is one of the very good example but every organism or the animal is not like same other organism yes some of the organism the blood is circulated through a series of vessels of varying diameter maybe arteries veins and capillaries as we have we have arteries we have veins and we have capillaries for the flow of blood but lower organisms or you can say the lower phylum they do not have it now next is the symmetry this is the second characteristic what was the first characteristic here that was the level of organization level of organization maybe a cellular level maybe a tissue level maybe organ level or completely maybe to the organ system level right now symmetry what do we understand by the symmetry and how can we understand this i'll explain this first animals can be categorized on the basis of their symmetry now we should know what is symmetry sponges again we are starting from the lower phylum are the mostly asymmetric 
जो स्पॉन्चेस हैं वो जनरली असिमेट्रिक होते हैं आपके यानी एंड दैट इज द एनी प्लेन दे पास थ्रू द सेंटर डज नॉट डिवाइड इन टू इक्वल हाफ फाइन यानी अगर आप कोई भी सेंटर एक्सेस अगर मान लेते हैं और किसी भी ऑर्गेनिज्म को टू इक्वल हाफ में मतलब टू हाफ में डिवाइड करने की कोशिश करते हैं तो उनकी कोई सिमेट्री है ही नहीं टू इक्वल हाफ उनके कभी बन ही नहीं पाएंगे वेन एनी प्लेन पासिंग थ्रू द सेंटर ऑफ एक्सेस ऑफ बॉडी डिवाइड द ऑर्गेनिज्म इन टू टू आइडेंटिकल हाफ इट्स कॉल्ड द रेडियल सिमेट्री ओके so we are talking about this the radial symmetry for an example if i'll talk about a simple one i'll take an example here i have this round pie it is not an organism and i have axis here is the center mein bachcho ek axis hai yahan pe so i will draw i'll try to draw a straight axis well this is the axis here ऑर्गेनिज्म इज लाइक दिस दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम आई कैन से दैट ऑर्गेनिज्म इज रेडियली सिमेट्री लाइक इन दिस केस ओके तो दिस इज द एक्सेस पॉइंट हियर ये यहां की हम बात कर रहे हैं बेटा ओके तो इफ आई डिवाइड लाइक दिस ऑन दिस और दिस पार्ट डेफिनेटली वील गेट टू इक्वल हाफ एट दिट काइंड ऑफ सिमेट्री इज कॉल्ड रेडियल सिमेट्री तो सम ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिज्म दे आर असिमेट्रिकल सम ऑफ देम आर रेडियल सिमेट्रिकल डू वी हैव अदर कैटेगरी येस वी हैव वन मोर कैटेगरी हेयर सिलेंट्रेट इंटर फोर्स and echinoderms they this kind of body plan this which kind of the animals like annelids arthropoda where the body can be divided into identical left right half only in one plane they exhibit the bilateral symmetry like this if i'll cut this organism from this axis to so definitely by this plane i can divide into two equal halves any other plane will not give two equal half so if this kind of symmetry we have this this is called your bilateral symmetry in your organism get cut into two equal left and right half as we are the part we have bilateral symmetry okay so now level of organization then after that symmetry now we have diploblastic and triploblastic organization what do we understand have you heard this term earlier aapne kabhi suna hai is term ke bare mein fine and nahi bhi suna hai to i'll explain you you know you are able to see the diploblastic and the triploblastic what do we understand by diploblastic you know ectoderm is the outer layer like i'm talking about this then endoderm so we are talking about this This is mesoderm, the pink one. This layer is the mesoderm layer. Do we have well developed mesoderm here? No, we do not have in this case. Which case? Diploblastic. Now we'll explain this. Animals in which the cell are arranged in two embryonic layers: in external ectoderma, ectoderma, and internal endoderm. Ectoderm. outer layer external layer then inner your internal layer is endoderm if two layers are there the organisms have a category of diploblastic animals now next is because why what is the reason this beta like cylindrates then undifferentiated layer mesogalia present in between ectoderm and endoderm so instead of a completely develop a layer of complete development then we can give the name to this layer is mesoderm but actually it's not a completely developed layer this is called mesogalia if mesogalia present instead of mesoderm then we'll give a category of one and two layer 
that is your diploblastic organisms now those animals in which the developing embryo has a third germinal layer which layer mesoderm in between ectoderm and endoderm they call the triploblastic animals you can say the examples that remains to chordates okay so if mesogilia pair present the animal definitely a diploblastic animal example cylindrates all the cylindrates come into this category agar usme instead of mesogilia middle layer एक्टोडर्म और एंडोडर्म के बीच में अगर मीजोडर्म प्रेजेंट है रियल मीजोडर्म प्रेजेंट है तो उसको हम बोलेंगे ट्रिप्लो ब्लास्टिक और फाइलम प्लेटेम के बाद कॉर्डेट्स तक यही कैटेगरी हमने सब में ऑर्गेनिज्म में इस बेसिस पे भी इनको ग्रुप किया है क्लासिफाई किया है नाउ नेक्स्ट कैटेगरी स्लो इट्स इट्स अ कैविटी बच्चो ये कैविटी के बारे में हम बात कर रहे हैं तो प्रेजेंस और एबसेंस ऑफ कैविटी बिटवीन बॉडी वॉल एंड गट वॉल is very important in classification so cavity may be present between body wall and the gut wall or may be present or may be not present or may be present into certain patches you know incompletely developed you can say the body cavity which is lined by mesoderm is called cilia fine the so which body cavity we are talking about lined by mesoderm that's called your सिलोम एनिमल पॉजिस सिलोम आर कॉल्ड सिलोमेट्स अगर सिलोम प्रेजेंट है देन विल गिव अ कैटेगरी टू द एनिमल्स सिलोमेट्स लाइक एनिलेट्स मोलस्क आर्थ्रोपोड्स इकाइनोडर्मेट्स हेमिकॉर्डेट्स एंड कॉर्डेट्स सम ऑफ द एनिमल्स ऑफ द बॉडी कैविटीज नॉट लाइन बाय मीसोडर्म इंस्टेड द मीसोडर्म इज प्रेजेंट एज स्कैटर्ड पाउचेस in between ectoderm and endoderm such a body cavity is called pseudo coelom yani coelom jaisa kuch lag to raha hai par actually wo well developed coelom ya well lined by mesoderm nahi hai to unko hum yahan rakh dete hain category mein pseudo coelomate ab mera ka diagram bhi beta aapko dikha dete hu abhi example hu aapka as ke hai mantis hum iski baat kar rahe hain bachcha the first is a coelomate सिलोम इज नॉट प्रेजेंट एट ऑल खाली आपके एक्टोडर्म है यहाँ पे और कोई लेयर हमें मीजोडर्म के साथ आने का नजर नहीं आ रही है नाउ हम बात करते हैं यहाँ पर सूडोसिलोमेट सूडोसिलोमेट मतलब ये आपका एक्टोडर्म और मीजोडर्म लाइन नहीं है देखिए कुछ पैचेस यहाँ जरूर बन गए हैं ये हमें नजर आ रहे हैं कुछ पाउचेस हमें नजर आ रहे हैं यहाँ पे इसलिए ये लग रहा है कि सब कैविटी डेवलप यहाँ तो बिल्कुल दिख रहा है कोई कैविटी है ही नहीं यहाँ पे हमें कैविटी लग रहा है बट एक्चुअली ये कैविटी वेल डेवलप्ड है ही नहीं इसलिए द कैटेगरी इज दूडो सिलोमेट सिलोमेट कंप्लीटली डेवलप ये देखिए दिख रहा है हमें यहाँ पे वेल डेवलप्ड कैविटी प्रेजेंट है एन ऑर्गेनिज्म सोन एज द सिलोमेट नो विल गो बैक एनिमल्स इन विच द बॉडी कैविटी इज एबसेंट एट ऑल जिसमें बॉडी कैविटी है ही नहीं अलोमेट लाइक प्लेटर एलिमेंथिस तो सिलोम में सिलोमेट If if true cavity present there, if appearance of it there, and a cilomate, if body cavity is not present at all, these are the diagram I explained. Now the next category is segmentation. Now what, what do we understand by this term segmentation? The term is not new. We are familiar with the term. Well, in some of the animals, the body is externally and internally divided into segments. With a serious, um, serial repetition of at least some organs. For example, earthworm. Have you seen the earthworm? So, earthworm की जो body होती है आपकी उसमें क्या होता है? आपका पूरा का पूरा segmentation होता है ना पूरा petamases इस तरह से पूरे segments बने होते हैं और पूरा body earthworm का इसी तरह से बना होता है आपका. Isn't it so? The body shows this pattern which is called the metameric segmentation. and this phenomenon is called the metamerism so which phenomena the earth form they are showing the metamerism and the segment pattern is called the metameric segmentation now next is the notochord notochord is a mesodermally derived rod like structure formed on the dorsal side during the embryonic development of some of the animals 
कुछ एनिमल्स में डॉर्सल साइड पर मीजोडर्मली एक रॉड लाइक स्ट्रक्चर फॉर्म हो जाती है वो स्ट्रक्चर हम लोग उसको बोलते हैं नोटोकॉर्ड एनिमल विद नोटोकॉर्ड उनको हम कैटेगराइज करते हैं कॉर्डेट्स एंड दोज एनिमल विच डू नॉट फॉर्म द स्ट्रक्चर विल कैटेगराइज दैम एज नॉन कॉर्डेट्स पॉरीफेरा टू कैरोडर्मेटा दे आर इन टू द कैटेगरी ऑफ द नॉन कॉर्डेट्स तो अगर रॉड लाइक स्ट्रक्चर नॉटोकॉर्ड प्रेजेंट है तो कॉर्डेट्स हैं और अगर नहीं है तो वो आपके नॉन कॉर्डेट्स हैं फाइन तो इस तरह से बेटा हम लोगों ने पहले देखा कि कौन से बेसिस थे तो हमने फर्स्ट आपका हेडिंग यहाँ पे कंप्लीट किया कि व्हाट आर द कैटेगरीज कौन कौन सी कैटेगरीज हैं जिस पर हमने ये बेस किया है तो एक बार फटाफट से हेडिंग एक बार आपको बोल देती हूँ सबसे पहला बेस हमने लिया लेवल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन का लेवल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के बाद सेकेंड हम लोग आ गए सिमेट्री के ऊपर सिमेट्री के बाद हम लोग डिप्लोप्लास्टिक और टेप्लोप्लास्टिक इस बेसिस को डिस्कस किया है फिर हमने सिलोम को डिस्कस किया देन उसके बाद सेगमेंटेशन एंड नोटोकॉर्न दीज आर द बेसिस फॉर द क्लासिफिकेशन एंड नाउ आई एम वेरी श्योर यू नो द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दम नाउ क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एनिमल्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट यू शुड नो द क्लासिफिकेशन कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स फर्स्ट बेसिकली तो ब्रॉडली वी हैव दिस काइंड ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन बेस्ड ऑन यू नो द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स वी हैव स्टडीड नाउ जो हमने पढ़ा अभी अभी उसी पर ये बेस्ड है तो किस किंगडम की हम बात करना बेटा तो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एनिमल एंड आई हैव ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन ऑल द एनिमल्स दे आर मल्टी सेल्युलर लेवल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आई हैव एक्सप्लेन सेल्युलर टिश्यू ऑर्गन और ऑर्गन सिस्टम तो हमने टू कैटेगरी में और किस बेसिस पे लेवल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन पे हमने डिवाइड किया है फिर हमने सिमेट्री लिया है सिमेट्री में जितने भी सेल्यूलर ऑर्गेनिजम्स हैं आपके दे आर मोस्टली असिमेट्रिक इन नेचर एंड जो आपके टिश्यू लेवल ऑर्गेन सिस्टम वाले हैं वो रेडियली भी हो सकते हैं और बायोलेट्रो सिमेट्रिकल भी हो सकते हैं तो पहले बात करते हैं जो असिमेट्रिक है वो असिलोमेट है यानी उनमें कोई ट्रू कैविटी प्रेजेंट नहीं है और एक ही फाइलम है दैट फाइलम इज पॉरीफेरा विल स्टडी दिस इन डिटेल नाउ टिश्यू ऑर्गन एंड ऑर्गन सिस्टम लेवल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में रेडियल बताया था आपको फ्रॉम एनी यू नो इफ यू कट द ऑर्गेनिज्म फ्रॉम द सेंट्रल एक्सेस इन टू इक्वल हाफ डेफिनेटली विल गेट टू इक्वल हाफ दे आर अलोमेट देन ऑर्गेनिज्म कौन कौन से आपके ऑर्गेन फाइलम्स है सिलेंट्रेट और ट्रिनोफोरा बायोलेट्रल सिमेट्री में विदाउट बॉडी कैविटी असिलोमेट सूडोसिलोमेट एंड सिलोमेट तो बेस्ड ऑन सिलोम प्लाटे एलिमेंथस एस्क एलिमेंट्स एनिलीटा आर्थ्रोपोडा मोलस्का एकाइनोडामेटा हेमिकॉर्डेटा एंड कॉर्डेटा तो दिस इज द ब्रीफ यू कैन से चार्ट वे स्टडीड अबाउट what we are going to study now ab one by one we will study the phylums present here okay now i'm starting with sabse pehle sabse simple uh, phylum se main start kar rahi hu that is porifera you know sabse zyada focus karna beta yahan pe kuch nayi cheeze kuch naye terms hamare paas hain jiska matlab bilkul pata hona chahiye aur kaun se basic important characteristics hain jo specifically us particular phylum ke liye hi hai and then examples the examples are definitely you have to learn the examples jo specific hai kuch to aapko lagega yes we know this ye pata hai ma'am hame to members of this phylum they're commonly known as the sponges is uh, phylum ke बेसिक मेंबर्स जो जनरल मेंबर्स हैं उसको कॉमनली हम लोग स्पॉन्जेस कहते हैं दे जनरली मेरेन इन नेचर किस हैबिटेट में रहते हैं मेरेन वाटर में रहते हैं दे मोस्टली असिमेट्रिक इंपॉर्टेंट तो कॉमनली नोन एज स्पॉन्जेस दे मोस्टली लिव इन मेरेन वाटर एंड दे आर असिमेट्रिक इन नेचर आई हैव ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन दिस दे आर प्रिमेटिव मल्टी सेल्युलर एनिमल्स एंड हैव सेल्यूलर लेवल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन क्या इंपॉर्टेंट इनफ एंड आई हैव शेयर विद यू पीपल दे आर मल्टी सेल्यूलर बिकॉज वी डू नॉट हैव एनी एनिमल विच इज नॉट मल्टी सेल्यूलर ओके तो वी हैव मल्टी सेल्यूलर लेवल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नाउ सेल्यूलर लेवल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन द लूजली अरेज सेल दे हैव आई हैव एक्सप्लेन अबाउट इट इज वेल द स्पॉन्जेस 
सकते हैं वो वाटर ट्रांसपोर्ट इम्पोर्टेंट पॉइंट बेटा ये स्पेसिफिकली आप याद रखिए डेफिनेटली इसमें अगर आपको कुछ पॉइंट लिखने हैं तो आप देख लिखेंगे सिमेट्रिक देन सेलुलर लेवल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन थर्ड पॉइंट में आप आ जाइए इसके वाटर ट्रांसपोर्ट सिस्टम पे वाटर ट्रांसपोर्ट सिस्टम और यू कैन सी दिनाल सिस्टम तो वॉटर एंटर थ्रू माइन्यूट पोर्स ऑस्टिया द वॉटर एंटर इन टू द बॉडी ऑफ एन ऑर्गेनिज्म थ्रू द माइन्यूट पोर्स द पोर्स नोन एज द ऑस्टिया इन बॉडी वॉल इन टू द सेंट्रल कैविटी देन वहां से कहा आ जाता है सेंट्रल कैविटी सेंट्रल कैविटी इज नोन एज स्पॉन्जोसील फ्रॉम वेर इट गोज आउट थ्रू ऑस्कुलम विच इज अ लार्ज ओपनिंग प्रेजेंट दिस पाथवे ऑफ वॉटर ट्रांसपोर्ट इज हेल्पफुल इन फूड गैदरिंग respiratory exchange and the removal of waste now you know since the collar cells they line the sponge seal and canals to ab main thoda sa diagram se aapko beta help karke bata deti hu iske bare mein dekhiye ye sponges ki hum baat kare beta to water enter from this side this the minute pore present here okay this the sponge seal so they are taking whatever required by the organism and the osculum with the present here is the large pore water moving in and moving out by this process and this process through which they are excreting whatsoever uh, waste product they have they are gathering their food as well with the help of this water movement now digestion is intracellular the food digestion is intracellular body is supported by skeleton made up of spicules or the spongy fibers please remember this name sexes are separate not separate they are hermaphrodite hermaphrodite is a word given to the animals where the male and female organism into a single organism or the animal you can say the egg and the sperms are produced by same individual sponges they are produced asexually by fragmentation sexual reproduction by the formation of gametes fertilization is internal and development is indirect that means they have a larval stage between which is morphologically distinct from the adult any larva is not similar to the adult now examples you can do yawn spongilia you spongia any i mean you can learn this this up to you how many examples you want to learn but you should know that this particular organism belongs to this so what's important here in the porifera beta the porifera they are asymmetric the cellular level of organization they are very specific water transport system digestion intracellular sex not separated they hermaphrodite in nature if asexual reproduction by fragmentation if sexual reproduction is by the gamete formation fertilization is internal and through the indirect larval stage formation and then larval stage is morphologically morphologically not um, similar to the adult one and the last minute i've given the example i have shown these diagrams as well they all are the organism for the porifera only now we'll move into the second phylum the second phylum is slentrates or slentrata now half of the things now you know i mean some very definitely some new terms also will come they are aquatic mostly marine sessile or free living sessile they can be attached to a specific substrate kisi ek cheez se chipke bhi reh sakte hain sessile matlab motion ya movement nahi hai unke andar and they may be freely swimming or kuch organism freely swimming bhi ho sakte hain now just compare the porifera they were asymmetrical in nature and here the cylindrids they are readily symmetrical animals okay i'll show the diagram as well bilkul abhi dikhaungi main aapko the name the jovias derived from etoplast or nitocyst they contain the stinging capsule or nematocyst they present 
on tentacles and the body it's in protection in them etoplas they use for anchorage defense for capture of prey okay so these are the diagrams you have to see okay the this is the string we're talking about the picture they have given here this one and these are the organisms better now the gyrus they exhibit the tissue level of organization and in porifera what was it it was cellular level of organization they are diploblastic they have central gastrovascular cavity what was the name of cavity there spongocele and a single opening mouth on hypostoma digestion is extracellular and sometimes be intracellular some of the animals like corals they have skeleton composed of calcium carbonate you know no coral reefs so the the organism belongs to this phylum they exhibit two basic form of the body very important beta polyps and medusa some of the organism they exhibit two kind of you know body forms polyps and medusa kya difference hai dono body forms mein this one the polyps it's it's sessile it is substrate se chipak ke rahega free living ya free swimming nahi hai sessile and cylindrical like hydra where the little umbrella shaped and the freely swimming like aurelia or the jellyfish so i'll show the diagram here okay so this is which which one is this is the pura free living and this is related to substrate you can say the so polyp form and this is the medusa form beta so this is fixed and this is freely moving anywhere now next those cetaceans who exhibit both forms they exhibit alternation of generation alternation of generation matlab ke life mein kuch time they may be in polyps form and other in the medusa so they alternate in polyps and medusa forms beta the polyps produce medusa asexually and the medusa forms polyps sexually in that way then again we have certain examples then you can look into these examples as well diagram i have already shown now second phylum nitrophora the tinophora the tinophora the commonly known as the sea worms and the comb jellies they are exclusively marine to abhi jitne bhi phylums aaye hain they are living in the marine water they are radially symmetrical earlier was also radially symmetrical they are diploblastic they were also diploblastic in nature and the tissue level of organization to similarly if file compare the phylum cylindroids with tinophora they both have few common characteristics definitely they known as the sea walnut the comb jellies but they are radially symmetrical they are diploblastic they have tissue level of organization now the body wears the eight external rows of ciliated comb plates which help in the locomotion digestion both extra and intracellular it was same there then this is specific characteristic feature bioluminous the property of living organism to emit light which well marked a tenophores sex is not separate same here and reproduction takes place only by sexual means jabki isse pehle wale phylum ki baat kare hai na to wahan pe kaisa tha bachcho cylindrates mein it was asexual mode also present right fertilization is external with indirect development and then again we have given examples here then i'll show the picture of this as well this is tinovora okay these two belongs to plate elementis so first i'll explain then i'll discuss this these pictures with you now plate elementis next phylum so we have done three phylums and you know you can understand uh, their characteristic different very easily now 
they are dorso ventrally flattened body hence they are called the flat worm so flat worm is they normally known as the flat worm because their body is like this only they mostly endoparasite they found in the animals including human beings to so, organisms of the phylum they are generally you know endoparasite matlab body organism kisi aur organism ke andar aaram se rehte hain usme hum bhi aate hain hum matlab human being we are talking about flat worm and the bilaterally symmetrical they are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic remember very important a celomate very important and the organ level of organization if somebody will give a question to you name the organism or the name the phylum with the triploblastic a celomate and the first organ system of organization then definitely you will write the plant element is in that way hooks and suckers are present in parasitic forms why so you present hote because the some of them they absorb nutrient from host directly through the body surface you know agar endoparasite hai to food kahan se le rahe hain jis organism mein hai wahi se lenge na to wahan pe stuck aur chipakne ke liye they have hooks and suckers the specialized flame cell they help in osmosis regulation and excretion to so flame cells responsible for osmosis regulation means the maintenance of the presence of the amount of water present in the body and excretion definitely elimination of the uh, non required substance or the waste substance from the body sexes they are not separate fertilization internal and the development is through many larval stages example planaria which definitely possesses high generation of capacity you know we have been class 10th as well and many more examples stenia fasciola liver fluke we have now i'll show the picture these are the tape worm flat worm you can say this is the liver fluke which is flat they are flat in uh, in you know uh, appearance now next is ascalanthus this is the next phylum obviously it was then the previous phylum the body of ascalanthus is circular and cross section if you will cut it you will see like this not the flat hence they are called the round worms i'll show the picture as well this is the picture these are the round worms here okay they may be free living aquatic terrestrial or parasitic in plants and animals too round worm they have organ system level of body organization they are bilateral symmetrical triploblastic in nature and the pseudo celomate animals alimentary canal is complete though it was not there in the parasitic form of the platelmintus well developed muscular pharynx present an excretory tube they remove the body waste from the body cavity through the excretory pores now they are the animals the sexes are separated and the term will use here dioecious any male and the female they are distinct they are different organisms the females are longer than males see this is female it's longer than the male present here okay now next is the fertilization is internal and development may be direct the young one resemble with the adult or indirect now and then lot of examples we have escherichia avicheria any example which you like definitely learn but you should know which example belongs to which phylum these are the examples of axialimentus next we have here elinida definitely i was showing a picture and in details also there now i'll explain it they may be aquatic marine or the fresh water or terrestrial free living and sometimes they are parasitic too they exhibit organ system level of body organization and they are bilaterally symmetrical they are triploblastic they are metamerically segmented and coelomate animals okay and earlier it was not coelomate what was in there these body surface is distinctly marked with 
um, out of the segments and they are called the metamers and has the phylum name is annelid. This and this little rings. The pauses longitudinal circular muscles which helps in locomotion. Equity can lead like nervous. The pauses the lateral appendages. You know, nervous can the lateral appendages out there. That appendages the name is parapodia. The one mark question many times I have seen in the question paper. Parapodia which helps in swimming. The circulatory system is closed type. Nephritia. They help in osmoregulation and excretion. Neural system, they consist of paired ganglia or ganglion connected with the lateral nerve to the double ventral nerve cord. Neris, an aquatic form, is dioecious, but earth form and leeches are monoecious in nature, means they have male and female sex organs present in the same organism. Reproduction is sexual for sure. In many examples, there is Fatima and Tumania. They are there in the phylum. These are the diagrams. This is Enilid, Neris, and this is Tumania. Now, next we'll move to the next phylum, Arthropoda. It's a well-known phylum. You all know about this. And the animals present their cosmopolitan nature. It's the largest phylum, largest phylum of Animalia. Which include insects. Over two third all named species on the earth are arthropods, right? Because it's, a, it's the largest one. They have organ system level of organization, that means they are well developed. They have bilateral symmetry, triploblastic, segmented, and zygomata animal. The arthropods covered with cartilaginous exoskeleton important point exclusively for the phylum the body consists of head thorax and abdomen the division of body in head thorax and abdomen they have jointed appendages very important for this phylum only the arthropod they have joined appendages have you ever seen uh, the grasshopper the cockroach they have a leg like this okay body is asset as do you so this is the characteristic feature of this phylum only. Now respiratory organs like gills, book lungs, yeah, book gills, book lungs, and tracheal system. The respiratory organs may gills and book gills, book lungs, or the tracheal system. Circulatory system, it's of open dry. No waste vessels here. The sensory organs like antenna, compound and the simple eye present here, and stratocyte or the balancing organ are present in the organisms here. Excretion takes place through malapagian tubules associated with the digestive system only. They are mostly dioecious in nature. The fertilization is usually internal. They are mostly oviparous. And the development may be direct or the indirect. Okay. Now they the egg. That is why they are into the category of oviparous. Examples and economic importance. Oops. Honeybee, Epsentica, Silk Bomb, Bombex, Lucifera, Anopheles, Culex, Aries, the Moscutos variety. And this is, you know, Grasshopper and Living Fossil. That's definitely Lamex. Please, yeah, okay. Skin crab. Really, really very, very important part of this video. Okay. You have to learn the specific point, right? These are the diagrams. Arthropods me. This is Apka Lucas. So you can see the grasshopper butterfly. This is prawn scorpio. These are molluscia. Okay. Now we'll come. We'll start the molluscia. The second and phylum here. The largest one is the arthropod for sure. The second largest one is the mollusk. They are terrestrial or aquatic, marine or the fresh water. They have an organ system level of organization. They all have the organ system level of organization. They are bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic and coelomate animals. So, these characteristics are all about bilateral symmetry, 
ट्रिपलोब्लास्टिक या सीलोमेट एनिमल्स का द बॉडी इज कवर्ड बाय अ कैल्सियरियस सेल दैट इज अनसेगमेंटेड विद अ डिस्टिंक हेड मस्कुलर फुट एंड द विस्ट्रल हार्म अ सॉफ्ट एंड स्पॉन्जी लेयर ऑफ द स्किन फॉर्म्ड अ मेंटल ओवर द विस्ट्रल हार्म and the space between the hump and the mental is called the mental cavity in which a uh, feather like gills are present in. they have respiratory and excretory functions as well the interior head region has the sensory tentacles the mouth contain a file like grasping organ for feeding that's called the radula important specifically for this phylum they use the diocious oviparous with direct with indirect development example pila apple snail lapka pinnacle lapolo star sepia now okay many more we have here octopus then you will look into this part beta okay now next phylum is echinodermates echinodermates the starfish so na na humne wohi wala phylum hai ye now the next phylum is the echinodermata they animals they have an endoskeleton of calcareous osseous they have their name as echinodermates the spiny body spiny dekho nazar aa rahi hai yahan pe body chote 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 spine hai beta body ke upar this is sabse the clear aapko nazar aa raha hai balloon glasses nahi dekhne abhi aapko this will not consider will consider this in this picture okay now all the marin their organs term level of organization the adult echinodermates they are readily symmetrical very important but the larva are bilateral symmetrical to yaad rakhiyega echinodermates mein jo aapke adults hain wo readily symmetrical hai lekin jo aapke larval stage ki agar hum baat kare to usme aapka kaisa hai radial symmetrical hai they are triploblastic ceromata animals digestive system complete with mouth on the lower vestibular side and then is on the upper side remember this the most distinct feature of the candarm is the presence of the water vascular system which help in locomotion capture and transport of food and respiration the really really very important the so which is specific for the specific for the candarmates an excretory system that's absent sexes are separate and reproduction is sexual fertilization usually external the development is indirect with free swimming larva then examples many more we have this astria starfish finis searchin nitot sea lily cucurbania the sea cucumber many more beta we have here to so we'll learn the examples these are the pictures i have shown already now the phylum hemichordata any chordata ke aas paas pahunch gaye hain hum okay the hemichordates they are the earlier considered as a subphylum under phylum chordata but now it is placed as a separate phylum under non chordates the pehle hemichordates ko subphylum mein hi rakha tha chordates ke lekin abhi categorize karke usko different non chordate phylum bana diya hai hemichordates they have rudimentary structure in the collar region that's called the stomachord stomachord as a structure a rudimentary means a kind of structure present only non working you can say which structure is similar to the notochord what is notochord i have already explained what is notochord this phylum consists of a small group of worm like marine animals with the organ system level of organization they are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic ceramid animals the body is cylindrical and composed of interior proboscis important point a collar and a trunk the division of body in a deep proboscis and collar in a long trunk to so, diagram me ek minute yeah this one proboscis this is collar and this is trunk they have here okay now respiration takes place through gills only and the excretory organ is proboscis sex are separate fertilization external and the development is indirect 
एग्जाम्पल बनाना क्लासेस एंड सिखा क्लासेस याद रखना है आपको यहाँ पे नाउ द मोस्ट एडवांस्ड यू नो फाइलम दस फाइलम कॉर्डेट आ तो फर्स्ट वी शुड नो अबाउट द कॉर्डेट्स दैन वी शुड नो द डिफरेंस बिटवीन एस वेल तो फाइलम कॉर्डेट आ एनिमल्स बिलोंगिंग टू द फाइलम कॉर्डेट आ दे आर फंडामेंटली कैरेक्टराइज्ड बाय द प्रेजेंस ऑफ अ a dorsal hollow nerve cord and the paired pharyngeal gill slits please remember these are very very important points here yeah? this is gill slit notochord and the nerve cord present here okay to so animal in the phy phylum chordata they have characteristic notochord nerve cord and paired pharyngeal gill slits slits present in the organism they are generally bilaterally symmetrical triple blastic coelomate organ system level of organization they possess post anal tail and closed circulatory system now we have a table to compare between the chordates and the non chordates in chordates just we have done chordate not a chord present central nervous system is dorsal hollow and single pharynx perforated gill slits present heart is ventral and the post anal part tail is present non chordates not a word absent central nervous system is ventral solid and double gill slits absent heart is dorsal if present and the post anal tail is absent completely So if somebody will ask for the difference, you can write the difference. If somebody will ask for the specific characteristic, general characteristics of chordate, then you can write into this. Now we have divided chordates into three subphylum. The subphylum Eurochordata or Tunicata, Cephalochordata, and Vertebrata. आपको याद रखना है ये दोनों हम इसकी बात कर रहे हैं दे आर इन टू दैटेगरी ऑफ प्रोटोकॉर्ड एड्स एंड एक्सक्लूसिवली मैरन इन नेचर In eurocordates, the notochord is present only in the larval tail. Eurocordates में notochord present तो होती है, लेकिन कब बेटा होती है? Only larval tail. While in cephalocordate, it extends from head to tail region and persists throughout their lives. तो difference दोनों में क्या है? Eurocordates में सिर्फ larval stage में हैं, जबकि cephalocordates में ये पूरा time, पूरी life रहता है organism में. Now we have few examples here. You have to understand the examples, so you have to learn the example, right? Now the members of phylum Vertebrata they possess the notochord during the embryonic period. Notochord is replaced by cartilaginous bony vertebral column in adults. You know this as well. All the vertebrates are chordates, but all the chordates are not vertebrates. Important statement. Now you can explain this. Besides the basic Chordate characters: the vertebrates have the ventral muscular heart with two, three, or the four chambers. Now we'll study about this. The kidney for excretion and osmoregulation, and the paired appendages which may be fin or limbs. Okay, so this is an interesting one. We'll move ahead now with the division of vertebrata. Subphylum vertebrata. The further divided into the two divisions. ऑस्टियोग Tetrapods may we have classes in Thibia, Reptilia, Apes, and Mammals. Now we'll study about these classes. The first we'll discuss and we'll start with 
this class done okay no no a first class we have here cycles to ma to all the members of the member they are ectoparasite some fishes they have elongated body bearing 6 to 15 pair of gill slits for respiration they have a sucking and a circular mouth without jaw very important learn it the body is devoid of scales and the paired fins now cranium and the vertebral column are cartilaginous right important cartilaginous okay the circulation of these animals of close type they are marine but they migrate for swimming to fresh water very very important beta then after swimming they can again within a few days they die the important and very important point you can see one mark question anybody can ask on this the larva after metamorphosis then turn to ocean examples aapke ye aapko karne hai beta hack fish hai aapka petromyzon these are the example next we have this class which class we are talking about the class of pythons here that's yahan par contractors they are marine animals with a streamlined body they have cartilaginous endoskeleton mouth ventrally located not a cord passes through the life in this lid they are separate without operculum or the case the clear cover the skin tough containing minute placoid scales and teeth are modified placoid scale which are backwardly directed and the jaws are very powerful these animals are predaceous and they due to the absence of the air bladder very important point about this due to the absence of air bladder they have to swim constantly to avoid the sinking to buoyancy make karne ke liye ye lagatar swim karte rehte hain heart is two chambered one auricle one ventricle some of them they have electric organs like torpedo some possess poisonous strain like trigon they are cold blooded they are public famous animals they lack the capacity to regulate their body temperature sexes are separate in male the pelvic fins bear caspo and they have internal fertilization and many of them are vivi parents examples we have scolodon dogfish basil sawfish many more examples we have we have shown the chollus vertebrate petromyzin and then we have cartilaginous fishes here now we'll move on to the next class that ostic this they it include both marine as well as the fresh water fishes they are bony endoskeleton which was not there earlier the body is streamlined mouth is mostly terminal they have four pair of gills which are covered by operculum on each side very important difference between the skin is covered with sacred the scales the air bladder is present which regulates the buoyancy there's no need to swim continuously heart is two chambered one auricle and one ventricle they are cold blooded too and the sexes are separate the fertilization is usually external they mostly be parasites and development is direct then many more examples we have here you have to understand the examples as well now bony fishes we have shown the example not about this we'll discuss about this only with that next we have here amphibia you all know this i'm sure as the name indicate they do like the amphibians can live in aquatic as well as in the terrestrial habitat most of them have two pair of limbs body divides into head and trunk tail may be present in some and the amphibian skin is moist without scale you know remember the frog okay and the toad the eye they have eyelids and the dimfin they represent the ear to so actual ex- external ear is not present instead of that a membrane present that's called the tympanic membrane elementary canal 
urinary and the reproductive tract open into a common chamber that is called the cloaca which opens to the exterior. Respiration by gills, lungs or through skin as well. The heart is three chambered important enough, two auricle and one ventricle. They are cold blooded animals too. Sexes are separate, the fertilization is external, they are oviparous and the development direct. Very common examples, Rana Tecrena the frog, Hyla, Salamandra and other examples as well. Now this next class is Reptilia. The class name refers their creeping, the crawling mode of locomotion. They recreate in their creep or the crawl. They are mostly terrestrial animals. The body is covered by dry and conified skin and the epidermal scales. They do not have external air opening. Then again the membrane present here. The limbs when present two pairs, heart three chambered, but four chambered in case of crocodile. So this is exception. You will learn it. The reptiles are, they, they, that means they are cold blooded. They are not able to control their body temperature. They are not able to maintain their body temperature. Snakes and lizards, they shed their scales. So the skin cast, sexes are separate and the fertilization is internal. They are oviparous and the development is direct. Okay. Now, then again, we have a lot of examples here. The turtle, tortoise, crocodile, poisonous snake, nasa or the cobra. These are the examples here. Reptiles, I've shown you. The crocodile, this nasas. Now, next we have class F's. The characteristic feature of the birds, they are present, presence of feather there. Most of them can fly except flightless for the ostrich. Okay, so this is the exception here. They possess beak, forelimb, modified into wings, and the hind wings they generally have scales and modified for walking, swimming, clasping, and tree and branches. Skin is dry without glands except the oil gland at the base of the tail. Endoskeleton is fully ossified or the bony you can say the long bones hollow for their cavity okay the digestive tract of the birds are additional chamber crop and lizard and heart is completely four chambered what was there in reptile it was for crocodile it was four chambered only they're warm blooded then homeothermals, the animals, they are able to maintain the constant body temperature, respiration by lungs and air sac connect to lung supplement respiration. Sexes are separate, fertilization is internal, they are oviparous and development is direct into. Now, carpus, eculambage, many, many examples we have here. And we have our class, Mammalia. You know, this is the most advanced class we can say. We have to be proud of it. They found in the variety of habitat, maybe polarized caps, desert, mountains, forest, grassland, and the dark caves. Some of them they have adapted to fly or live in water. The most unique mammalian character is the presence of milk producing gland. You can say the mammary gland by which the young ones are nourished. They have two pairs of limbs adapted for walking, running, climbing, burrowing, swimming or flying. The skin of mammals is unique in posing hair. External ears or pinna they are present and different type of teeth present in joys. Heart is four chambered and they are homeothermal. Respiratory is by lungs, respiration by lungs, sex is they are separate and fertilization is completely internal. They are wavy parents, and the few exceptions developed in direct. Oviparous, we have example, platypus, oviparous, then again, most of them they are oviparous here. Okay, so these are the examples we have here. Now, in a table, we have given a brief summary of the animal kingdom. Porifera, cellular level, symmetry, 
various celome absent, segmentation absent, digestive system absent, circulatory system absent, respiratory system absent, and body with pores and canals and walls. Now, cylindrates, the tissue system, radial, celome absent, segmentation absent, digestion incomplete, circulation absent, respiratory system absent and the specific character endoplast present here. Now, to know for us, the tissue system, symmetry radial, celome absent, segmentation absent, digestive system incomplete, circulatory system absent, respiratory system present and the complete of loco for locomotion. Plate element is the organ, the organ system, symmetry bilateral, celome absent, segmentation absent, Dust system incomplete, circulatory system absent, respiratory system absent, flat body at the suckers present, a specific structure here. Ask element is the organ system level of organization, bilateral symmetry, pseudo -celomate, segmentation absent, dust system complete here, circulatory system absent, respiratory system absent, and they often, they are warm elongated, they are warm, like warm shaped and they are elongated too. Now any leaks. Organ system, bilateral symmetry, pseudomate for sure, segmentation present, digestive system complete, circulatory system present, respiratory system absent, and the body segment like rings. Now, in the next part of this table arthropods, organ system, bilateral symmetry, the coelomate, what present here? What was it? This was segmentation digestive circulatory system. Okay. So present here, the complete system, present, present, and exoskeleton of cuticle, the joint appendages. Molars. This is now this is the characteristic, you know, in all present. Here we have bilateral symmetry, echinodermates, coelomate, age pelicaradatu, absent. Complete present, present, and external system of skeleton uh, is shall usually present. Echinodermates they have radial symmetry. The coelomate, then which is absent here? You tell me now. Segmentation, where it is present? It's present in annelids only. Okay, now the digestive circulatory system definitely it's complete and present, present. Same, it's not present. This the, the not present means the division of you can say the metamers. Then water vascular system, or you can say the radial symmetry. Then hemichordates symmetry, coelomate. Then definitely division absent. Then everything is complete and present. The bomb like proboscis collar and trunk division. Chordates, they are bilateral symmetrical. The coelomate. The definitely is present here, the complete, the present, present, not to cord, dorsal corona of cord, gizzlets, they, by the limbs or the fins. This is a summary kind of thing through which if you learn after that, you can revise with the help of this table. From my side, I've explained everything to you. Once you want to revise, you just see this video again and again, the specific terms they are there, uh, you know, the tip for this chapter is once you will you know for example you have done the first part like classification basis you have done so first of all uh, you know write once the what are the basis there quickly write and recap it important things the diagrams present there then come to the classification the classification find them why you will prepare and in the last they we have given a table here no you make you prepare your own table and vice through it Definitely for sure you'll able to solve all the question given in NCRT or any other reference book.